beautiful mind. The biggest question that I always get when it comes down to really just a question from the heart is how? What is the how? And I always say the Holy Spirit is the how. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the means are given through the Holy Spirit, so that's why the whole Course in Miracles book is really aimed at putting you in touch with your own internal teacher. Because when you're in touch with the how, then that ceases to be a question. Uh, you just are given the how moment by moment by moment through inner listening and, and then acting upon the instructions. And it's really that simple. Listen, follow. Listen, follow. It's, it's the way. That is the how. And I know in my life it was, it was very much a path of, um, I'll call it the four M's. I don't think I've ever talked about the four M's, but I'll talk about the four M's briefly here. Um, and I'll talk about them in the order in which they touched my life. Uh, the first one I would say is, is meditation. And meditation is a traditional means of awakening. It's been around for centuries and centuries and centuries, and most every spirituality acknowledges the power of, of meditation and the importance of meditation. And it's, it's in A Course in Miracles, uh, in the I Need Do Nothing section. He basically describes meditation as one of the techniques or one of the means that will work to get you back home, to get you to back to that experience of God's love. He does describe it, Jesus describes this in A Course in Miracles as tedious and time-consuming. Uh, which is good, if you're asking, give it to me straight, if it's one of the traditional means of awakening, that's good to know, like, we don't discount it, and it's tedious and time-consuming. And I think for most people, um, it there's a sentimental feeling about meditation, and, and, and when people try to practice it, they go, whoa, not a lot of progress coming here. Uh, it's usually very slow progress, because the chatter of the mind, uh, they call it in the East, the monkey mind, is, is seems to be so entrenched that, wow, talk about patience and perseverance and determination. M, meditation will get you there, but... Uh, there has to be a shorter way, and it uses meditation in conjunction with other things. Second thing that touched my life and my life experience was music. Before A Course in Miracles, before metaphysics, before anything else, uh, the music just started speaking to me. It was like God talking to me on the radio. I just would flip on the radio and I would get these songs, and the lyrics were like, they were unraveling the mysteries of the universe, lyric by lyric, and I was just, it was great, great tunes too, great sounds, fun, it was a little, a little more fun than meditation. <laughs> uh, cranking up the fun factor there, yeah, bring it into me, bring me, reel me in, <laughs> get me good, and the music was huge, and of course we have people throughout history like Beethoven, you know, uh, and I think of Mozart. Mozart would get entire concertos in a flash. Talk about quantum. Back in the, the early, over in Europe, I mean, Mozart is a great example of quantum. Taking down entire concertos in a flash, in a matter of seconds. He did quickly. <laughs> Try to start writing it all out, because it was good. And then in my life, after the music really got me in, in my heart, got the tickle really moving, long before I, I was into philosophy or metaphysics or whatever, then, then it really the music opened me up to A Course in Miracles in an experiential way. So I wasn't like going to the book and kind of reading it kind of intellectually, as if I was re taking another course, or trying to logically figure something out. I was. I was, my heart was opened, so that when the third M, Miracles, <laughs> came into my experience, the music had opened, opened the way. The music was very much a part of the Miracles, and it opened the way. And so I was drinking in A Course in Miracles, word by word, line by line, 
I was slurping it in so much and absorbing it that I actually, after about two and a half years, I would go to course groups and I would start spouting A Course in Miracles verbatim, line after line, paragraph after paragraph, all went from memory. People would say, no, no. And even page numbers, I'd go, da 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 page 347. They'd go, no. Ah! Da 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 page 1028. No. It just was, it was just beautiful. And so that came in, and then, and then finally, after all the miracles, and miracles, and miracles, and miracles, really opened me up, uh, the fourth M, movies, came in. How do you share this with the world, when the world isn't necessarily into metaphysics, isn't necessarily into theologies, and, and it's so deep, it's so deep, no wonder Jesus used parables mm -hmm. to teach it back then, because it's so deep that there's, there wasn't even words invented. Remember, back when Jesus was speaking, there was no word ego. There was no mm -hmm. word for defense mechanisms, and all these subtle aspects of the unconscious mm -hmm. mind, and on and on and on. Because Freud hadn't come along yet. <laughs> he was long <laughs> before Freud. And so, he simply used parables and said, for those that have the ears to hear, let them hear. For those that have the eyes to see, let them see. And, and it was beautiful. And now I was aware, as I was being reached through the movies, all my awarenesses were like coming like light bulbs in all these great movies, that actually, this was a, a, these were the modern day parables. This was our modern day discourse. People talk about the movies like they used to talk in parables back in the day of Jesus. It's like, aha, we've got all the ingredients to go for a comprehensive awakening now on the planet. And so, I really love shining, sharing, using the music, using the movies, and, and basically, there was great ones throughout history. I think of like 1929, Jimmy Stewart and Lionel Barrymore, You Can't Take It With You, 1946, Razor's Edge with Tyrone Power, and then when we started to get into modern day movies, there are movies that I have shown all over the world and people's hearts just open up and they laugh and they <laughs> laugh and they go, whoa, like Groundhog Day. <laughs> you show Groundhog Day in South America and everybody is like, yeah, just howling with laughter as Phil Collins is caught in the loop of time and is trying to escape from the loop of time, and he has to do it, but there's not really a teacher in Groundhog Day. He's got to do it for the school of hard knocks. He has to die over and over and over, <laughs> <laughs> electrocuted, <laughs> hit by a bus, <laughs> drive off a cliff, you know. He tries everything, and people laugh because they can see that's the human condition of trying and trying and trying for release, and in the end, Phil does make it to the happy dream. Everything lights up when he gives up, when he says, you know, I'm, you know, I give up, when he really, he gives up, you know, and he really comes to that I love you moment, then he's out of the loop. But there was no teacher, there was no kind of symbol of the Holy Spirit in Groundhog Day, or no teacher. And then, comes around 1998, it's almost like, now the Spirit says, let's crank it up for humankind. If we had to go back to 1998, at the end of the millennium, ooh, the Matrix, ooh, the ego's not, oh no, not the Matrix. You're gonna, now it's not only got the whole scheme of, of the trap, but we have Morpheus. Morpheus, now we've got a teacher figure coming in to, the, to our movies saying, you know, I can help you, but you must do exactly as I say. <laughs> I can only show you the door. You have to walk through it. We're like, whoa, 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 wham, bam, 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 we watched the Matrix movie. We're like, whoa, 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 the Matrix and the 13th floor. Ooh, the thirteenth floor, when that one came out, it was like, wow, dazzling, because you followed the, 
the plot and you start to realize that none of the scenarios that they seemed to believe were real were real at all. It started to, we had movies starting to question, what is this? Is this any more real than the dreams I have at night? Or the things that I imagine in my fantasies? Is this, what, what is real? Ooh, we started to get movies that are, the spirit was cranking it up, saying, okay, humanity, time to wake up. And then we had a movie that came out uh, from Australia called Dark City. I remember my roommate at the Peace House, he came home from work, his name was Mark, and he said, David, he said, forget dinner, <laughs> I'm taking you out to the movie theater. He grabbed my hand, we went out. We sat in the back of this movie theater, there hardly was anybody there, they were all huddled in front like they were watching a horror movie. And we watched, if you liked the thaw last night, if you liked the thaw, Dark City is a two hour, approximately, full length Course in Miracles movie. That was a full 50 minute Course in Miracles Star Trek episode. Dark City's got it all. The, the, the attack thoughts, the unconscious mind, the surface projection, all the projections coming up. Not just the people, the buildings are projection. There aren't bricklayers building these buildings, they're just projections of mind. Spectacular, showing the teachings of A Course in Miracles all in a two-hour movie. We just sat back there just doing high fives. We were just like, whoa! <laughs> course teaching after course teaching every five minutes. Whoa! While the other ones were huddled in the front, like watching a Boris Karloff movie that seemed like a horror movie. We were ready, our minds were primed to hear the truth, and we were hearing it. And it's just continued on. And so what... What more can you do than find these great movies, have this awakening experience? But well, it started to dawn on us as we kind of moved through the 2000s, a group of us, messengers, we started to say, well, you know, the course is spectacular. We don't really, you don't even need to write another book. The course could be very easily the last book that you would ever need to work with, really. It's that good. You could just stop the rest right there. But, what if we could put the teachings of A Course in Miracles into some kind of a movie, a, a mechanism, a mind training device that would include meditation, music, and movies, all wrapped into one. What if we could come up with a, a tool that was like the Course in Miracles, that it had a linear, you literally moved through it. You had exercises, you had things to engage with, you had things that you would work with, with mind training partners. What if there was a way to make the teachings of A Course in Miracles into an audio-visual experience, so that you could engage in it anywhere in the world at any time? You could do it at 2 in the morning, at 4 in the morning, at 6, 10, 12. You, you could simply do it as you were willing to do it. You didn't have to wait for the teacher to come to you or to be there. You could like go actively to this mechanism and, and literally have like a digital version of the Holy Spirit working with you. And that's where we came up with the Mystical Mind Training Program. And I can't even tell you the hundreds and hundreds of collaborative hours that went in to building that. Uh, it was a Everyone was doing it as a labor of love, but they were doing it for, as part of their own mind training. I had loved the movies for years, and so we started to take movie clips, and a lot of the teachings I had done, and some of these kind of discussions, and music, and meditations, and everything, and exercises, and put them all into one systematic program. So it wasn't kind of hit or miss, it was kind of like taking you in, and taking you systematically deeper and deeper and deeper into your mind using audiovisual things. You know, if you talk to children, some children like to read books, but they love movies, they love television, they like to see it in 3D, coming right at them. Beautiful mind.